the world's most lifelike picture. SU HD TV. Recipe for success. Proudly brought to you by Samsung. Welcome to Recipe for Success. Now we all know how tricky it is these days to find a job, let alone a dream job. Now this show provides a student chef with the opportunity to do just that, to find their dream job. Each week, the student will be cooking for one of South Africa's top chefs. And if they're good enough, they'll walk away with that job offer. They'll have to impress the chef with their preparation, their cooking skills, and their presentation to get the job. So it's completely up to them. I'll also be chatting to some of South Africa's leading entrepreneurs to find out more about their food and wine preferences, but also to get their recipe for success. Then there's also the viewers competition. But let's get straight down to business. This week's student is from Cape Town. My name is Tepo Itumeleng Millicent Tembinkos Makachani, and I am 23 years of age. I live in Woodstock, Cape Town, and I'm from a small town called Virginia in the Free State. Uh, previously, I was studying electrical engineering in the Free State, and due to the fact that I had been hosting a whole lot of events, uh, my dad just decided I should just stop everything and pursue what I love, which is culinary arts, and that's how I ended up at Capscam Culinary Studios. My dream job would be to work in a restaurant or wine farms, and to learn as as much as I can to hopefully grow and hopefully open my own doors one day. Being on the show is thrilling and it's an amazing opportunity. And the possibility of and hopefully getting a job is mind blowing. So it's one thing I look forward to. Tepo is probably one of the most creative students I teach in the college right now. He's always looking to push the boundaries on a personal level and on his plates. The, the sky is the limit for him, and I look forward to seeing what he's going to do on the show, and I wish him all the best. Hey, Tepo. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good and yourself. Good. You don't look too nervous. Uh, I try not to be. <laughs> now, listen, um, Chef Michael Cook, that's coming today, good friend of mine, um, you know, one of South Africa's top chefs. So you've got to impress him today, um, but I know you can do it. Uh, you look confident. Are you confident? I am slightly confident, but I uh, have to get the job done. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's have a look at where you might be working after this episode. Okay. Michael Cook is the head chef at the campus, which is a signature restaurant on the Vergeligen estate. The restaurant takes its name from the ancient giant camphor trees planted in the 1700s and overlooks expansive lawns and beautiful trees, complementing the overall dining experience and creating an ambiance never to be forgotten. The 3,500 hectare estate offers amazing opportunities to grow fresh produce which Michael takes full advantage of to create fresh and inspiring dishes using only the best produce. His small yet dedicated team of four chefs push out up to 400 dishes a day while still maintaining a very high standard of quality. The approach to food in this kitchen is to create dishes that will work perfectly with the wines which the sommelier and his restaurant team have to offer. The experience is tailored for both wine and food connoisseurs and everyday visitors alike who want to enjoy an unpressured dining experience. Mike, thanks for joining me, man. Yeah, I know you're a busy guy, yeah. so um, I appreciate uh, you know, coming in and giving us some of your time. Now, this is Tepo. Hi. Tepo, Hi, Michael. Hi. Nice to meet you. So, um, as I said before, you know, you've got to impress this guy. Mike, uh, it's all up to you today. I'm going to be observing. Um, I know this guy's got it, you know, so um, Tepo, all the best. Thank you uh, so much. But you've got to impress this guy, so good luck with that. How are you feeling? Confident? I'm feeling slightly nervous, so I won't lie. Okay. That's cool. What are you cooking today? I'm doing a beef sirloin with a parmesan a mashed potato, as well as some uh, caramelized onions. Okay, all right, yeah. brilliant. Why did you decide to do beef sirloin? Um, my reason for this is because uh, pretty much my dad is the kind of person who has to watch his health and stuff. I just love cooking this way. Oh, brilliant. So how long are you going to need uh, to cook this? About an hour and 20 minutes. Okay, brilliant. Well, best of luck. Thank you so much. So as I was about to cook, uh, seeing Chef Ruben and Michael over there, I literally was nervous and looking at the fact that okay, I have to prepare this meal 
uh, though I have only done it a couple of times, was a little bit unsure of it, so I gave it my all. To start off my dish, I sauteed some charlotted onions with a little bit of butter for about two to three minutes, and then added some balsamic vinegar and let it simmer for about a minute until it was nice and soft. The balsamic sauce that I made was a little bit sour. So in order to kind of like get it back to where I wanted to, I just added a little bit of sugar. Then after I was done with my onions, I proceeded to mandolin my carrots and saute them in a pan with a little bit of butter and honey. Then I placed the carrots on some baking sheet and placed them in a preheated oven so they can crisp up for about 10 to 12 minutes. Once my carrots were going, I peeled off my potatoes and sliced them up and then put them in a pot to boil for 10 to 12 minutes. Once my potatoes were done, nice and soft, I drained the water, crushed them up into a mesh. Then I added some Parmesan cheese for taste and let it cool off for a little bit. As I moved on to the meat, I crushed up some garlic and marinated the meat with salt with a little bit of oil before actually putting on the pan. So I got my meat and I have a clear idea on what I want to do with it. I'm gonna char it in order to add a bit of smokiness to it. I hope it pays off. Uh, could it would actually be quite good. Simply add items during wash. Add wash. Recipe for success. Proudly brought to you by Samsung. You won't believe what you can make in a microwave. Hot blast. Recipe for success. Proudly brought to you by Samsung. So I placed my meat on a griddle pan as I was looking for charred marks that would give a bit of texture to the meat. Once that was done, I placed the meat aside so it can cool off a bit before putting it back on the pan with a little bit of butter in order to give it a shimmering shine. Uh, chefs, I am finished. Well done, Seppo. Smells, smells delicious. Good, huh? Yeah. How did you think it did in terms of time, Mike? Oh, pretty bang on. Yeah. Uh, that'll leave you enough time to plate up and let's see how it tastes. Yeah, sure. Okay, so Chef, are you ready to start preparation for plating? Yes, yeah, sure. Good. Okay, so while you're doing that, last week I chatted to Mr. Yanni Maton, founder and chairman of the PSG Financial Group, to find out what he likes to eat and drink and to find out what's his recipe for success. I just want to say thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much from my side. You know, you're a famous chef, so <laughs> I know about you. For me, it's also a great day today. <laughs> so, Yanni, a little bit about um, just what happens at home in terms of who cooks the food at home. I mean, uh, do you like to be in charge of the braai yourself? The braai side I can do, but my wife is actually also a Michelin chef. Wow. Yeah, she's a famous chef and very, very good. This is actually how she, you know, she lost her husband and I lost my wife. And she started inviting me for dinners at that place. So, no, she's a wonderful cook. So, and so you like the braai side, but what, I mean. Oh, crayfish. Yeah. Yes. And if you have the right chef. Yeah. That's why I'm going to follow you, because <laughs> crayfish and prawns is for me fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I also love it. And a good wine as well, you know. Yeah. Any preference with wine? I mean, are you... You know, I'm a wine farmer as well. Each and every morning I have to start at 4 o'clock on the wine side and then work there till 9 o'clock the day. Yeah. I have Neil Ellis is making my wine oh, and he's yes. doing everything and he's an exceptional friend of mine and a great wine. Yeah. So what? what which are you? Is it a label that you? Uh, Gastro. I'm farming on a farm on the 
van Glen Castro. Glen Castro. Is, uh, label, ja. And so Neil Ellis is making it. That's up at the Als Wachter Pass, isn't That's it? That's right, yeah. yeah. You know, also, I think, uh, taking from myself being a businessman and also a lot of people obviously out there want to learn from people that's successful. I mean, you've been successful for, for many, many years. You know, our conversation really, it'd be nice to find out a little bit more from you. You know, where did it all start? And is there like, you know, there's obviously not one silver bullet that makes things happen. Um, to just share with us, you know, how, how did it all start? I grew up in the Karua, then I, went to Stellenbosch and then I went, I was employed at a company. And then later on, I, I, we started, a couple of us started a stockbroking company. That was my great thing in life. And then things have changed there. I think it's well known, I've been fired there. And I think, first of all, it's a tremendous shock for you and your family. And then you realize, and I almost call it the defining moment in my life, then you realize you have to make a change in your life. So you have to regroup, get something, get a plan and focus on it. And for young people, a bit of a message is they're still learning, work hard and understand yourself. And when you find something great, like you are a well-known chef, that is what you have to do. And it's hard work each and every day. You have to concentrate because you can serve 100 good meals and one bad meal, and then the people will talk about that little bad meal. Yeah, so it's actually, to a sense, hard work and concentration. And once you've, once you've made it, um and you're successful, uh, and this is not just for South Africa, but also all over, but we're uh, part of giving back, um, not just financially. I mean, I'm talking really about uh, like what you're doing now, sharing your knowledge. Um, uh, is that important for you? Uh, I think that's very important, giving back to society. Yes, and I spoke about it, a successful company is a contribution for society. It employs people and it pays taxes and things like that. But yourself only get satisfaction if you can make a difference in the lives of people and that they can be happy. Now, this is something all of us must focus on to give something back in life. This is what you are doing with this program of you to train new up and coming chefs as entrepreneurs. And it's a privilege and you're giving back your time and it's fantastic because you will be successful in doing that. And each and everyone will one or other day have a tough time they will lose something, somebody that's special to them, or they will be in fight or something like that. But that must just inspire you. You mustn't sit back and complain. It must just inspire you. So, Yanni, what is your recipe for success? I think you must understand your own strong points and weak points. And then once you and then focus, get yourself almost a plan discuss it with your friends and family, people close to you. And when you have a plan that you discussed, and you know your limitations, then put it in place. And be positive and focus on that. Focus is another thing. Focus on that to achieve it. And it can adapt over time as you experience. So it should be flexible. Maybe. Yeah. Yanni, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it um, and, and for your insights. And I'm sure um, the entrepreneurs out there or would-be entrepreneurs have learned a lot from... Uh... An entrepreneur is a special person in life for me. And it's a wonderful chance in your life to, if you're young, to become an entrepreneur and success with your venture 
and I hope they will turn out fantastic. Thank and you. they don't won't compete with you one day. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank nice you. meeting you. Good to meet you as well. Thanks. Now that was quite an inspirational conversation I had with Mr. Maton and he provided us with a lot of gems for all the entrepreneurs out there. Seppo, you can finish up and we'll see you at final presentation. All right, Chef. I didn't have a clear idea on how I was going to plate it. Uh, I had a whole lot of concepts going through my mind. Thought of doing some old school techniques. Uh, but the way it looked at the end uh, was actually quite amazing. Like, I actually loved the way it looked. Um, if I can do it again, over again, I would change a couple of things. Uh, from the carrots to the... Well, the uh, reduction worked out quite well. But uh, the carrots would be something that I changed. So those are the kind of things that I would kind of change. But overall, I think it, played, it worked well in the end. Works and plays together perfectly. Note 7, here classic. Recipe for success. Proudly brought to you by Samsung. Everything you need to succeed. Samsung. Business in a box. Recipe for success. Proudly brought to you by Samsung. I was literally nervous, um, shaking, my stomach in knots, just wondering if they would actually like it. Chefs, I've done my best and this is what I've prepared for you. Mm. It's a beef sirloin with potato mash, uh, which I infused with Parmesan cheese, and then did some balsamic reduction, caramelized onions, as well as some glazed carrots for you. Nice. nice. Yeah. I like, like the pink color of the meat inside. Mm. And that's what you said, you wanted it medium rare. Mm. Looks tasty. Yeah, looks good. Are you happy with your dish? Uh, yes, I, I'm definitely happy with it. Uh, it's kind of like everything that you want to have in a meal, so, yeah. Michael. Um, so what wine did you choose to pair with this dish? Um, I chose to pair it with a pinotage because it has a nice soft plum taste and also doesn't overpower the meat. Enjoy, chef. Yeah. Uh, lifting that lid of that plate uh, and seeing the reaction. At first, slightly, like a whole lot of nervous came in through and uh, I don't know what to think, uh, whether I should run out the door <laughs> but uh, seeing the surprised look in the faces kind of actually gave me a bit of hope that I might stand a chance or something. I think the meat's done really well. Mm -hmm. You know, there's that bit of acidity with the balsamic, but then there's still the sweetness of, yeah, the, the, of sweetness the onion. Of yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And nice. then the creaminess of the mash. Yeah, it works well, you know. Nice sort of textures going on. Um, I really like the, the bar marks on the meat. Um, not only from a presentation point of view, but it adds a, that, that charred, smoky sort of flavor to the meat, which is, which is really nice. Um, what, what got you into cooking? Why cooking? Um, growing up as a kid, uh, also in a big family, uh, used to visit my grandmother. Christmas time, winter time, just going there, picking up woods in order to make fire. And, uh, Oddly, I was the only boy in front of all my cousins who was chosen to stay in the kitchen. So I would cook with them, bake with them, there will be laughter, and all that's, that's the kind of thing that actually makes me want to cook, because it's all about capturing certain moments in life which are more memorable. There's laughter, there's all those great mm and ah sounds that go with every kind of dish that is played out. So that's the thing that kind of got me into cooking. What makes you want to take it to a professional sort of level and do it, you know, kind of full time? For me, on a professional level, there's nothing else that I think I would excel in than cooking. You enjoy the competitiveness of it, you know, pushing yourself a little bit further, you know, oh, being definitely. a bit more, you know, trying different sort of things and... Yes, uh, basically, uh, 
it would be a great deal to kind of learn more because, I mean, knowledge is the one thing that my parents have also instilled in us. And so, yeah, cooking and kind of learning from different cultures, different techniques, learning from different people is what I've also kind of been doing and I enjoy it. I love it. Right. Uh, I like your answer. Um, going to need a little bit of time to think about this, but uh, yeah. Tepo, I'm sure you're dying to find out what's the final verdict from Chef Michael here. But you're going to have to wait a little bit longer. It's now time for our viewers' competition. There are almost 250,000 rand in prizes to be won in our Recipe for Success viewer competition, which includes a full lifestyle solution worth over 100,000 rand from Samsung, comprising of a Galaxy S7 Edge smartphone, a Galaxy Tab S2 tablet, a color laser multifunction printer, a 55 inch curved SUHD TV, a water wall dishwasher, a top mount freezer, and a hot blast convection microwave oven. From Capsicum, a City and Guilds diploma bursary in food preparation. From fine and fabulous Neo Group SA, Jean de Bois Le Coil 24 piece French cutlery set. From Grand Cru Glassware, eight Riedel varietal specific glasses and from Mervyn Gurr Ceramics, a handmade crockery set for four. Only one lucky viewer will win all of these prizes. You can enter via SMS or on our website. To qualify for the grand prize, you need to correctly answer one of our viewers' competition questions. The more you enter, the better your chances. The competition closes on Sunday the 4th of December at midnight and the winner will be announced right after the last episode on the 6th of December, 2016. For more information and terms and conditions, please visit www.recipeforsuccess.tv. This week's question is, what was Yanni Mutan's recipe for success? Was it A, keep all your keys on one key ring? B, know your strengths and weaknesses? C, start your day with a cold shower? Please SMS Samsung followed by your answer A, B or C to 41703 or enter on our website www.recipeforsuccess.tv So Michael, have you decided? Yeah, I've given it a, given it a bit of thought. Um, yeah, I, I, I like your, your, your answers about where, where food has taken you. Um, it's sort of cultural aspect to to cooking um, you know when, when when I employ staff I employ it based on personality you know it's a lot easier to work with because I can always teach somebody to be good but I can I can't fix personality the sort of love and, and care that you've, you've, you've shown in cooking um, and the whole family aspect and the, the social aspect of, of, of cooking I find you know really really appealing to to work with um yeah you know you've shown all the right sort of personality traits um definitely somebody that i can that i could work with um i'd like to offer you the opportunity to spend a bit of time in my kitchen um kind of show you the ropes um get a bit of exposure to a different sort of level of of, of, of cooking um, you get to kind of see the, the inner workings of the professional cookery environment. Um, yeah, see what it means to make, to make a restaurant happy. Thank you for the opportunity. Great, Sepo. I think that's an, a really amazing opportunity. So well done. Congratulations. Thank you. I think you're going to learn a hell of a lot um, from Chef well, Michael. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for spending your time with us. Thank you. Really cool. Thanks for watching. See you next week. I'd like to thank Chef Ruben and Chef Michael, as well as Samsung, uh, for this great opportunity. Um, learning more from Chef Michael will be kind of like a stepping stone into me being a greater chef one day. So, yeah. Finally, a fridge you can personalize. Top Mount Freezer. Recipe for Success, proudly brought to you by Samsung.